Are you ready to elevate your hat designs with custom patches? In this video, I'll show you how to sublimate vibrant patches using 100% polyester fabric and the HTV Ront Auto heat press. Watch as I transform plain fabric into stunning personalized hat patches in just a few simple steps. Whether you're crafting for fun or creating unique gifts, this tutorial has everything you need. Stay tuned as we dive into the materials, techniques, and tips to achieve flawless results every time. Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Let's discuss some of the items we'll be using for today's project. I'm going to start with the fabric. This is a 100% polyester fabric from Hobby Lobby. It is called Kokomo Linen Outdoor Fabric. I will put the SKU number for this in the description below if you'd like to pick some up. I picked up a couple of hats. This one is from Walmart. I will be putting a patch on here for a friend of my husband's. I will be using this hat that I picked up from Hobby Lobby for myself. It is a ponytail hat, so I'm excited to try that. And then I have a distressed trucker hat for my husband's patch. To adhere the patch onto the hats, I'm going to be using liquid stitch fabric glue. The images that we're using, I designed in Affinity Designer 2 for the iPad. They are printed on a sub sublimation paper with my Epson SureColor F170 sublimation printer. I'll be using my HTV Ront Auto heat press to sublimate the material and I'll also be using a, an uncoated white butcher paper as well. So let me go ahead and get this cleaned off and we will jump into Affinity Designer and I'll show you how I design these patches. All right so we are in Affinity Designer 2 on my iPad. And I'm just going to go ahead and open this file here and I'll show you just real quick how I design these patches. Um, my patch size is three and three quarters wide by two and three quarters tall. And that is this inner rectangle here. And then this outer rectangle is more or less a, a weeding box. Um, I got this idea from the video how to create sublimate and press a hat patch from start to finish from Industrial Fringe. Um, I will leave a link to that video down in the description below. And I'm just going to start out by adding some text. So I will come down here to the artistic text and I will just drag that in there. And let's, let's have a mama bear patch. So I will type mama and then I will come up to the move tool. And then I will duplicate this. So for mama, I want to highlight the entire thing and come up and find the font that I want to use. And I really like this font here. Um, it's called a mastery script. A M A S T E R Y script. I'm not exactly sure how they pronounce that. Um, so I will come over here. And let's just change the color. Now there are different ways that we can adjust the size. Um, we can highlight the entire thing, come up to the top here and adjust the size. Or we can select the move tool, highlight it, grab a corner and just drag it out. And then that will also adjust the font size. So that looks good there. 
And then I will just come down here and I am a mama bear. So then I will come back to the move tool. And I will enlarge this font. And that looks pretty good. I think I like that. So then I am going to choose both words. I will come up to alignment and I will align them center. And while I have them both there, I will come up to the edit and I will go ahead and group them together. And then I will also select my outer boxes and come up to align center and middle. Come back up to edit and I will group them together. And there I have my first hat patch. So it is just as simple as that. And now I'm going to go ahead and save these. So I will save them individually. I will highlight one. I will come up to documents. I will export. I want to save this as a PNG. I am going to title this coffee run dot ng. I want the selection only. I'm going to choose OK and then I'm going to save it in this folder right here. I don't really have a good way to print sublimation images from my iPad. So I'm going to take the long way around and I'm going to email these three files to myself. And then I'm going to run over to my laptop and I will pull them into Word and print them from there. If you guys have a better suggestion, um, I'm all ears. Let me know down in the comments below. So let's go ahead and pop out of here and we will move on with the process. I have my image all ready to go. This is, if you'll recall, printed on a sub sublimation paper with my Epson SureColor F170 sublimation printer. I have my heat press turned on and it is warming up. Uh, we need the temperature to be 400 degrees. I'm going to pre-press my fabric for 65 seconds. And then I'm going to sublimate my fabric for 75 seconds. I am going to go ahead and clean off my piece of fabric with a lint roller. And this piece of fabric is cut to nine inches by 11 inches. And that's gonna be important. We're gonna talk about that at the end when I show you the finished patches. And now we're just gonna wait for the HTV Ron Auto Heat Press to heat up to 400 degrees. Our fabric is pre-pressed and I wanna go ahead and increase my time to 75 seconds. Okay, so that's ready. And now I'm going to tape my image down onto the paper. So I will set that down. And as always, I'm going to be using my heat resistant tape from Amazon. Now my platen is still awfully warm. So I want to be careful not to move that sublimation paper now that it's down. So let's go ahead and sublimate this for 75 seconds. All right, we're down to the last two seconds. We'll turn off the heat press and just let this sit for a moment or two 
to kind of cool down a little bit before we try and move it. All right, let's go ahead and take off our sublimation paper and see what we have. Ooh, that looks so nice. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything turned around and then we will move on to the next step. It's time to move on to the next step. But before we do that, I want to show you why it is very important to pre-press your fabric before you sublimate on it. This piece of fabric right here is cut to 9 inches by 11 inches. That's what this piece was originally cut to. And I hope you can see that when I line up these two edges, there is approximately half an inch on both sides. And that is how much that fabric shrunk. Let me show you one of my very first attempts at sublimating this fabric. So here is my first of four practice attempts. And as you can see, there is so much ghosting involved. Right around here, you can't even read what that patch is supposed to say. And that all happened because I, if I did pre-press this fabric, and I don't remember, but if I did pre-press it, I did not press it for the full amount of time. And it didn't shrink until I had my sublimation images on there. So, pre-press 400 degrees for 65 seconds. Cool off the fabric a little bit. Place your images on. Sublimate your image. 400 degrees for 75 seconds and you will get these beautiful hat patch images. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these apart and I am using my large Tim Holtz scissors for this. So I'm just going to separate these and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just on the inside of this black line. And if I don't get it perfect, I can always trim it up later. In order to fray this material, um, it helps if we get the edges a little wet. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water in this lid over here. And let's go ahead and start with my husband's safety third patch. So I'm just going to dip the edges in some water. Get it a little damp and I'm going to use my Cricut pick. And I'm just going to take one or two layers at a time. Or one or, two, one or two strings at a time, I should say. And I'm just going to work my way up to this thicker line. So I'll just speed right through this for you. All right, and there we have that. I am going to let this dry and I will get the rest of the patches frayed and then we'll be back. Our hat patches are frayed and they are completely dry now. So it's time to move on to the next step. I need to stuff something into these hats because they're really floppy. 
Um, I have just two hand towels here and I'm gonna see if I can not get this in here so that everything's kind of stable. If this takes too long, I'll just speed through this part, but hopefully it'll be fine. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Okay, so I have that in there pretty well. Everything's straight. I will use a lint roller just to get extra lint off there if there's anything. And our patch is going to go on there somewhere like that. Uh, I think I'm going to just kind of give this a tiny little pinch just to kind of see about where the center of the patch is. And it's right about there in the F. So if I just set that on the seam line, it should be fine. I had some issues with my microphone there for a minute, so we'll just do a little voiceover here. The liquid stitch adhesive that I'm using has some pretty simple directions. Shake well before use, spread the glue, press fabric in place, dry for 30 minutes. The adhesive is water soluble until it's dry. Do not iron until it's dry and wait 24 hours before washing. So I'm going to put the glue on the back of the patch and I'm going to avoid the frayed edges as much as possible. I did use this earlier on another hat just to see how it would work. And it really kind of smelled and looked like Elmer's School Glue. Now I'm going to use quite a bit and I'm just going to spread this around with my fingers. So I'm just using a baby wipe to clean off my fingers and the glue's coming right off. And then I'm just going to line up the center of the patch with the center of the hat. And then I'm just going to press it into place. One thing I am noticing is a feeling of moisture on my hand as I'm holding the patch down. Uh, the glue is not seeping through to the front but it is definitely something to keep in mind if you decide to use this liquid glue or probably any liquid glue. Okay, and there is our safety third hat. So I'm going to let this sit for a little while until I am sure that it is well adhered and I'm gonna leave the towels in here and after this dries, I will put a patch on my hat and I'll come back when they're all finished and show you the final products. All right, our hat patches are completely finished. They are dry and they look fantastic. I love the rustic look to them, especially on my husband's distressed trucker hat. The liquid stitch fabric glue that I used worked great. It was so easy to use. It cleaned off my fingers so easily. I did notice after my husband's hat and his friend's hat dried that two of the top corners needed a little bit more adhesive. So I just tucked a drop under each corner, pressed it down and let it sit and everything worked out great. So here's my husband's hat. Here is his friend's hat. I think he's going to appreciate that. And then here is my ponytail coffee run hat. I think this is great. One thing I did notice when it came to images, I have this peony flower bouquet that I use on my blog header as well as my YouTube channel. And on this particular fabric, this image did not work very well. And I believe it's just because there isn't a defined outline to the flowers. So if you're going to do this, then I believe that 
text fonts are better. Perhaps if you have a thicker outline image, it might also work well. But you know what? Give it a try and let me know down in the comments. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Until then, have a great day, you guys. Bye.